After accurately centering a hole with the stage, I can now set up the multi-shot spacing. So the again, the multi-shot spacing is unique to each grid because of the different sized holes and also the orientation of your hole spacing. So Navigator, Montaging and Grids, Set Multi-Shot Parameters. That's selected. The option I want to start with is Do Records in Multiple Holes. So I'll select that. And we need to create a 3 by 3 pattern to set the 3 by 3 pattern for our specific grid. We use this dialog here, Save Image, Shift Values at Holes. I'll click the top button, Four Corners of Regular Pattern. With that selected, I'm going to do image shifts to each of the corners of this 3x3 um, three three pattern. So I'll start with the left top. If I click that, that's a right click, drag to center, release, save image shift. You'll see here that the image is at 5.66 microns. Save image shift saves that vector from stage center. Next is the top right. Click, drag to center, release, save image shift, followed by the bottom right. Click, drag, release once it catches up. Save image shift. And then finally, the bottom left. Click, drag, release, save image shift. Now my pattern has been calibrated. If I click on the um, area where my crosshairs are, you'll see a 3x3 three pattern displayed. This is not the hole that I started with. I started with the hole with the three marker on it and you'll notice that image shift is at 5.52 microns. So in order to test this or further calibrate it, we should remove the image shift. To do that, we can go script, edit, run, one line, and then set image shift zero, zero, run. When I click this button, the image shift will be returned to zero and taking a view image will refresh the view. Now my stage and image are aligned with each other. Back to where I originally was. Now clicking on the crossers, you can see my whole pattern, very nice. This isn't where, this is, um, if, if you're doing one image per hole, this is where you would stop. If you're not um, and you're utilizing a high magnification like myself, which is, this is 165KX, we can utilize another function in here that's just do multiple records within each hole. I'll select that and you can see, when I zoom in, that I now have two acquisitions. The field of view of the camera is the magenta rectangle while this green circle around each of those rectangles is the beam diameter. Um, you can see that uh, with this two by two, I mean, this two hole spacing, the beam for one gets into the field of view of the other, but I have a lot of area. So I can adjust this value here, distance from center to main ring of shots. And uh, let's change that to something like 0.4 and hit enter. Okay, now, now I'm doing a lot better um, spacing wise. There's a little bit of beam overlap here, but that's okay. Let's increase the number of acquisitions in this hole. There's still some more space. So I'll click three and we're seeing that there's no overlap of a beam into the field of view. Let's see what four looks like. Okay, so with four, I'm now starting to get beam going into the field of view of my camera, but I can see that there's still a lot of real estate uh, that like with of ice, there's still a lot of ice within the hole that I'm not acquiring at. So let's adjust the distance again to see if we can get rid of this problem. So at 0.5. All right, so at 0.5, I'm now doing a bit better. Uh, let's just see what 0.6 does. Okay, so at 0.6, looking really good. Um, there's plenty of space between the beam and the camera. I think I could even fit in another acquisition. So from there, I would say yes, I can. Um, and then when I start getting to six acquisitions, that's where I have problems. I could add a little bit of spacing, but now I'm going to I could then start acquiring a decent amount of carbon, which I don't necessarily want. So I like this five hole spacing. Um, let's see, maybe I'll, I'll bump this up to 0.65. Okay, now I notice that there's a nice open area in the center of this hole. 
uh, there's an option it's shot and center do I want to do it um, sure and then the option is whether I want to do it before all of them or after I would recommend doing after others because this won't be the best shot there's five other beams that have warmed up the ice around it causing a little bit of motion and, and bubbling so um, not the best image but you could fit that there so from there the multi-shot setup is is completed and you just want to make sure this adjust beam tilt and astigmatism compensation you just want to make sure that uh, beam tilt and astigmatism compensation are enabled and calibrated Click OK. And there we go. Now the final thing we should do is test that. And so to do it, I can run this command called multiple records. And let's see what we're looking for here is um, many fringes from the beam. And that would be because of like some beam movement from the beam tilt and uh, or blank images or too much carbon. We just want to make sure that all of these movements are accurate. And since this is a blank square, we'll probably we're just looking for vacuum. Since these are empty holes, we're just looking for vacuum. If you look at the bottom right, you can see 54 acquisitions per stage movement. Last thing you need to do is reset the defocus value for view back to minus 100 microns.